You're one of the party I haven't met. I'm Michael. I'm Peter. I've met most of the others. Uh, the spread is excellent. The what? The spread, the food. Oh, yes, glad you like it. It's a change seeing vegetable dishes. None of this shoving dead animals down your throat. Then you're a vegetarian. Well, I enjoy watching them. Gives me something to aspire to. <laughs> Are you eating? Oh, well, I'm not a... Vegetarian. I have some food with me. I've eaten already. With the group? Before I came here. Didn't they tell you there was I going to be... I know would be. I preferred eating at home. Then have a drink. Better still have two drinks. One with me here and one down the pub later. A group of us are going on there. Not that I should drink. <laughs> my doctor says it's my worst weakness. I've got this work to do. Are you turning me down? No, of course not. So what do you want? Wine? Or juice? Wine. I'll go and get it. You like running around? <laughs> I haven't done my six of run around the park. This will compensate. <laughs> you run around the park every day? Yes, I look so surprised. I enjoy it. It's, it's one of those good things they urge us to do. It's on our menu of good things. <laughs> So. Well, one out of ten for enthusiasm. Who hasn't been reading their menu? Well, I think there's been some misunderstanding. You're right. I thought you got your good figure from taking care of it. No, I abuse him. I guess I don't care too much how it shapes up. Looks good to me. But shh, careless talk will get us banned. We don't admit to abuse in our group. What sort of abuse? Oh, you know, the big no-nos. Poppers, suppressants, alcohol, that sort of thing. Not to mention the more attractive drugs. Oh, for cocaine again. Do you mean that? No, of course not. I, I got a whiff of nitrates on a dance floor and nearly passed out and got turned on by a cake with hash in that wasn't meant for me. <laughs> Hardly abusive living, that. So, so you take care of yourself, do you? I try. <coughs> Michael, there's been some misunderstanding. What? Oh, never mind. How about that drink? I'll run. Hello. Hello, Jim, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I'm going to be late. I've been asked to join the visiting BP group for a drink afterwards at the pub, so don't hold me. Yes, I know. I'm not supposed to be there. Uh, look, please don't give me a lecture. It's only for a drink, OK? Jim, really, trust me. I heard the name Jim. Your lover? Friend, I was supposed to be having a meal with you. I'm sorry I lied to you before. I, I haven't eaten. You cancel. I said not to hold food. Oh, then we can have supper. Oh, come on. I'm over here at your helpline. A visiting relation. You must be kind to us. To me. Are you making a pass at me? I thought that was obvious. Yes, it is. Thanks. Thanks? <laughs> For making it obvious, I'm, I'm slow. Well, I'll teach you to catch up. <laughs> Go on, drink up. So, how many of you came down here tonight? You should know. I don't know. Twelve. Thirteen, counting me. Thirteen. Lucky number. Or is it unlucky? I never remember. I am a lucky number. And well. That's good. Why am I lying to you? I'm not that well. There have been, how should I say, certain developments. Oh. And you? Me? Yes, your health. No, no developments as far as I know. Oh, seems you've got the lucky number. What do you do, um, work? They unemployed me. I was made redundant. The clothes company went out of business. You like clothes? I like style. 
<laughs> I followed fashion without actually ever catching up with it. <laughs> Bought men's fashion magazines until I thought I could design clothes as well as them, if not better. What happened? Took my ideas to a company that had lots of ambition. They lost money, blamed me, and I lost out. <laughs> I'm so unfair. Mm. Now I find it hard to work the long hours. I'm not rich, but I can buy you supper. So what do you do? I work here and I'm a receptionist. Oh, that's why you weren't with the group. They overwork you, I'll complain. No, please don't. It's only a joke. Can I tell you that I like to have dinner with you? Really like to. I thought that was already decided. Michael, there's been some misunderstanding. You do have a lover. No, not that. The rest I'll forgive you. I hope so. Listen. This seriousness is killing the romance. And I am feeling romantic about you. Me too. Better. But there's something you should know about the body positive group. <laughs> it's not good. It's serious. Well, go on, tell me. I'm not a member of the group. I don't qualify. I think I've had a bit too much to drink. You can see that. Mm. It's getting late. I I'm glad you invited me over. I couldn't afford to take you out for supper after all. Am I supposed to believe that? I told you I was poor. Housing benefit and invalidity benefit don't go far. <laughs> I've spent hours telling you what a good fashion designer I could have been. And still could be. And that will be your seventh glass of wine. Been counting. Maybe none of my business, but it seems to me <coughs> that you drink rather a lot. You don't approve of drinking. Not when it does harm. You said that the doctor... Yes, okay, okay. Sit down. And stop me from getting drunk. My mother drinks. She has her men friends. And she drinks. She has her reasons. Oh, but don't, for pity's sake, let me talk about my mother. I'll stay. You don't have that seventh glass of wine. Mm. Emotional blackmail already. Yes. Mm. Is it a deal? I like that. I said, is it a deal? <laughs> it's a deal. Only because it's you and because... So tell me about you. But I want to know more about you. Well, that will bring me back to my childhood and family. I was born in the early 60s when my mother was swinging <coughs> a little higher than she is swinging now. And my father was... Oh, let's leave out my father. Oh, come on, you make him sound more of a mystery than your mother. Oh, no mystery. He's an unhappy man. I love him very much. <coughs> I could spend whole evenings talking about my father. So I'm invited back? Depends if you tell me about you. What about beginnings? That's a good place to start. My beginnings were dull. I was a dull child. I lived in South London. I had the sort of education that gets you through grammar school to A-levels, then various jobs in the city. Very dull. And you've overworked the word. It's true. When did you discover you were gay? 
This boy fainted in the school playground. Instead of undoing his shirt collar to give him breathing space, I undid his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever did you manage to do that? A group of us carried him off to the school playground toilet. The rest of them got bored, left me alone with him. I wasn't bored. He came round to me, giving him a rather intense examination of the lower region. <laughs> and what happened then? Well, he slapped me round the face, called me a pervert, and I spent the rest of my teenage years doing penance with a lot of boring girls. And then? Uh, now I need a drink. May I kiss you? As long as I can kiss you back. <laughs> Disappointed? Can we kiss please? I thought we already had. Properly? I kiss badly. I'm sure you don't always kiss with your mouth closed. Peter, I want to kiss you. Peter, you are not... No, I am not HIV, or rather I don't know if I am. I also believe there is no risk in our kissing with our mouths open. Oh, this is absurd. Everything I'll have to say on the subject will just I'm sound sorry, wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop it or we'll ruin it. I know there's no fear in open mouth kissing. It's just... I don't know, reflex. Old fears die slowly, I suppose. So let's... Yes, let's. Let's go to bed. I'm more advanced than I was in the school playground. Sure. <laughs> Not dull. I promise I won't be dull if you encourage me. Just let me have one more glass of wine. I think he should have told you. He did tell me. Then why did you not see him? Isn't that a pretty narrow-minded question? I don't like the way he got involved because I saw him. He wasn't invited. I invited you. him. Yes, I invited him to join us. Does it matter? Can he latch to you? He finds you attractive. Oh, is that a crime? I don't see it like you do. I see it as... As what? Exploitation. <laughs> That's ridiculous! Look, shall we go through this point by I point? I don't think that's necessary. You know what I mean? That's what worries me. It also worries me that part of me has been trained to believe you. I have to be careful that I'm not exploited sexually or emotionally by a guy who isn't HIV. Or in Peter's case, a guy who hasn't tested and doesn't know. I mean, where's the exploitation? My vulnerability? It's not funny. It's something sad. It also works the other way around, you know. I mean, how many people have you exploited, or me for that matter, gone to bed with, had sex with, even risky sex with, and told them you weren't HIV? Maybe I did. 
Before, before what? A uh, book of morals? We don't have a book of you morals. Seems to have a lot of inner police. Michael, he knew you were HIV. He knew the whole group of us were. When he joined us, we thought he was too. We said things, confidential things. We assumed he was one of us. I'm not one of anything I mean. We assumed he was HIV. If we thought he wasn't, we would have talked about weather. Serious, Michael. Look, he's hardly going to spread it around that the people we introduced him to are HIV. Now is he? Well, for a start, he'd never remember the names. Well? Maybe not. Of course not. But if we don't keep to the rules... Oh, but back to our new book of morality. Thou shalt not fraternise with a fellow gay unless he has revealed his antibody status. What about you? What about me? Are you serious about him? I'm thinking about him. Yes, I feel I could be serious about him. Personally, I feel it's easier to have sexual relationships with people who know from the inside how we're feeling. God is not available. Smart. Or our counsellors. We do have each other. Others who are HIV. Personally, I like to think I have a broader field, thank you. And sharing someone else's fear of falling ill is not fun. Neither is sharing someone else's fear of you falling ill. You're a good friend, Adam. And I'd even call you my best friend. But I think we'd better call a halt to this conversation. something special. You and I. Yes, we had something special. Is this the reason for this moral lecture? Is that, that obvious? Yes. Pardon. So what do you feel? I want to carry you away to that safe place we live happily ever after. A horse of courage. Charming. A prince charming. But you won't move me to get us back together. Sorry. It's worth a try. It's a friendship. Ah, friendship! Reserved place for the rejected, you still want to run you? Unfortunately. I still want you around me. Then stop worrying about my welfare. It may hurt you. My risk. Any risk I like. I still love you. If he hurts you, we as a group pick up the pieces. He may not hurt me. I may hurt him. He is a person, you know, even if his blood count is slightly different from our own. I hope you like flowers. Oh, it's been such a long time since I received flowers, so I've forgotten how to put them in a vase. <laughs> Tell giving presents to people, don't you think? Yes. Have you ever thought of it? I mean, what'd you get someone? Chocolates. Men aren't taught to give each other presents. Flowers, chocolates, that sort of thing. They told us that that's men to women stuff. As for women. They usually end up getting the wrong shirt, or the wrong tie, or the wrong eau de cologne. It's 
supposing I got you the wrong eau de cologne, what would you have done? Kicked you out. So, you end up with flowers. You have yellow blinds in your bedroom, so I thought they'd match and we could look at them from the bed. Glad yeah, there's an arterium out too. Mm, the best. Well, are you just going to sit there and watch them? We keep up this silence. They will have wilted and we won't be able to look at I them I went from to the bed. see my doctor today. I was at the hospital. I knew you were going. I had hoped you'd take me with you. I had thought about it, but there was a visit I had to make on the ward. You okay? Yes, I'm okay. It's just what happened on the ward upset me, that's all. Sorry. What I'm trying to say is that I don't want you in at the deep end. I'm serious. <coughs> Look. Going to the hospital. What's happening to me? What is happening to me? My blood count is low, and I've lost weight. Not a lot, but a little is always a lot when you're HIV. <coughs> yes. It could be to do with the stress. You mean me? Don't get me wrong. I want you, and I know you want me. And what the doc the doctor said that what we do is okay. It's just a, well, it's just a, what you said about moving in. That stress. Look, I have a low-paid job, you don't have much of an income. We need all the money we can get. Paying one rent is better than two. Think of it, we'll have more spending Is money. that the best argument for it? You're fun! And I'm fast becoming a miserable bastard. All resemblances to the man you met at the BP party are purely coincidental. I'll cheer you up. Morning, night and end. Peter, time we have between. to think of the future. I am thinking of the future. I have a bill to pay any day I want to avoid it. Will you be serious? Time enough for that once I've unpacked my bags. Do you have much stuff? <coughs> Do you? You've seen my room. I'll leave her the lamp. Two or three suitcases worth. A couple of hours of packing, half an hour of taxi, and I'm all yours. I don't sleep well at night. I don't care. I snore. So do I. I make dreadful toast. I will survive. I also have bad night sweats. I'll walk you down. I also scream at night. I'll hold you close. You really mean all this, don't you? Look, you come into my office where I work and you sweep me off my feet and then... In fact, you actually seduced me. And now you have the cheek to try and put me off. Young man, I will not be trifled with. This is madness. All the best things No, are. they're not the stress factor. You won't have one once you understand that you can't live without me. Peter. Okay, so you can live without me, but you can do with the money. I've heard of love not winning, but money. You've used that argument already. It's a good repeat. How long will it take you to move in? Are you serious? I'm serious. About a minute. What? I said about a minute. You said you had three suitcases. Oh, I knew I had all the best arguments on oh, my side. Oh, so. this is going to. Yes, you guessed right. They're outside the door. It was hell bringing them up with the flowers. Go and get Sleep. I wish I could sleep, Peter. But after what I saw today, I can't even close my eyes. A young kid. I liked him. I desired him. He came onto that war chirpy and full of jokes, like he was taking time out from a party. Nineteen years old. The only sign he had pneumonia the first day he arrived was that he was a little breathless. 
just like any ordinary young guy would be, climbing up a flight of stairs to at a time. His lover came with him every day, distressed, but knowing he'd come out. They laughed and they joked, and even when the nurse put the oxygen mask on his face, he was still smiling with his eyes. And then one day, his parents came to visit him. And they invited me to join them for a meal. The sun was hot and bright. And it was like a picnic. His lover even tried to feed him strawberries. And I thought, this is the ideal picture. Lovers happy, parents caring. I thought the sun would never go in. I arrived at the hospital. I had wanted to take you with me because I thought it would be a happy day. I wanted you to see them together, happy with each other. The nurse stopped me outside the door. Billy had died, suddenly, half an hour before. He had had a bronchoscopy. <coughs> that stupid, painful investigation of the lungs. And he had died. The nurse said that she was sorry they had had to stick that thing down his throat, but there was no bringing him back. She said that they had taken him away earlier, which I didn't believe. So when she left, I disobeyed her and walked into that room. small, cute guy. His body so compact it was made for dancing. And there he lay on the bed. But this time, in a bag, like a parcel waiting to be picked up. At first I couldn't believe he was inside. see me like that. How did you cope? Well, Anne died of cancer. I'm a doctor, remember. Doctors are supposed to cope. Except that I made hell of all my relationships outside of the surgery. You make hell me hardly even told me. I didn't trust men with feelings, then. Now I'm admitting perhaps I was wrong. But we weren't talking about Anne and I. We were talking about you and Michael. What did you think about him when you met him? I found him as closed in and as bottled up as you are. We're both good room pacers. You talk about it? Eight. And more your relationship. Or are you saying that AIDS is your relationship? Sometimes it feels as though that's all there is. Well, it clearly isn't. It's obvious you love him. I'll tell him that. Peter, sit down. <laughs> it's not easy telling someone whose wounds are clearly visible, but those wounds are lovable. Michael's one great big hurt, as far as I can see. And you're fast getting just like him. Do you laugh together at all these days? We still have a lot of laughs together. Well, fine then. Arrange to go out one night a week just for laughs. It's not easy. Make it easy. Make it flippant. Make something fun. Arrange to go one weekend to the seaside. Go play on the fun fair. Ride on the ghost train. Tell me what to expect. How it could be. A boy.
possible deterioration. Very real deterioration. And I just stood there saying cliches. I felt like screaming inside. Except I didn't. I just said the first stupid things that came into my head and he knew I wasn't telling the truth. What is telling the truth? Not lies. I'm sure you didn't lie to him. I lied to him. I wanted to tell him that I was scared of losing him. That I wouldn't have gone into the relationship in the beginning if I seriously considered the possibility of losing him. Is that true? Yes. No, we won't. I don't know, it's all muddled. As he reminded me, he's got good muscles, good limbs. I, I couldn't imagine them getting flabby, becoming thin then. And now you can? Yes. I couldn't imagine making love to Anne with one breast. But he's going to have to trust you. Trust that you'll want him even when, well, even when he isn't as he is now. Supposing I let myself down. <coughs> Making love to someone who may die can mean a lot of things. Essentially, it's the assurance of wanting more than anything else. Demands change. I know, and I admit it's irrational, but what if I get the virus? Take precautions. Yes. Well then. The old habit of fear. First time we kissed with our mouths open, I nearly passed out. Total irrational fear. I didn't show it. Felt like screaming inside. First time we kissed, he gave me a dry kiss. It was me who forced him to kiss me with his mouth open. There was his saliva meeting mine, and there too in my head was this stupid scenario. Healthy wet meets unhealthy wet. I kissed the virus when we first kissed. <sighs> Two people who know the facts and are still controlled by outdated fears. And now? It's still the same for me as it probably is for him. I want to kiss him so much, I couldn't not. The brain is beginning to learn to shut up. Let me get on with enjoying him. But... <sighs> That's the difference. I mean, you and Anne, there was the loss and the disfigurement, but you didn't think that you'd possibly lose your life as well. That's true. But I thought more of her life than I did of my own. she managed to stay sane was by having this place that she could go to screaming. I can't remember whether it was real or imaginary, but she had a place that she could go to let out all the pain. That's what you need. You can't scream. You try. No. Fine. Now? I'm here. I'll do it alone. I'll find my own place. See if you can do it first. Go on, try. You know you want to. Trust me. <coughs> Trust me enough to let out a scream. Let the burning out. You left me so cold. What's your worst fear? Bad end. About how it affects you both. 
losing him. Visualize it. Visualize oh, it! I can't! <sighs> Try it. Look, the image is just too painful. So there's an image? Yes. It's a room. Right, okay. So, feel the image. No, don't think about it. What was your worst fear when I died? We're talking about you. I want to know, I want to know. The worst image that I had was seeing that breast lying around in the hospital and knowing that I touched it, caressed it. Made love to it. Seeing that breast and knowing that it was no longer a part of her, it would be destroyed. Ah! 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 Say what I see. When you're ready, you can tell. It's like walking into a beautiful room that you know you'd be happy spending the rest of your life in. There are a few things that change in the room. You know, essentials. And then you are told, I am told, that you can no longer have the room that it's only on a short-term lease, that you can love it as long as the lease lasts. I try to bargain, I try to bargain, try to make deals. Nothing works. The room is mine, temporarily. The sun shining through the window is mine, temporarily. Do it again if it helps. Things in the room begin to go. Ornaments first. A record here, a book there, not important details. Then it becomes more serious. The furniture goes. The chairs, the tables, the fireplace, but when there's no warmth from the sun. And then the bed itself. itself is taken away from me. The room is bare, but it's still mine. I still love it. Slowly I have to reconcile myself to leaving the room. I can no longer be sustained by love alone. I can no longer be sustained. It's a cold, empty place. No warmth left. No way of putting the warmth back. I reconcile myself to closing the door, knowing that nowhere will ever be as wanted or needed again. Or not. From now on, all shelters are to be temporary.
You know, this is the first time I've been out in the countryside since since you moved to London, perhaps. <coughs> now, if I remember right, I went to visit a windmill somewhere, <coughs> the Body Positive Group. That's fun. Did you mean <coughs> that? Why shouldn't I mean it? It just sounded as if you were knocking it, that's all. It wasn't knocking me out. In. We must analyse it, and we seem to analyse everything. <coughs> I was feeling envious. Why? No, jealous. Jealous that next time another acting comes along, you can go on it and I can't. Elfers can sometimes come with us. Yes, but they're not exactly over welcome, are they? We need time and space to ourselves, Peter. How many times do I have to tell you that? It just seems so separative. There are certain things only we can and want to talk about. Look, let's talk about something else. But can't you understand that I might feel envious about not sharing the things you share with them? What do you want me to do about it? Infect you so that you can come along? Sometimes I wouldn't mind. Don't ever say that again. All right. It's not all right. I don't know if you meant it, but don't ever say that again. It shows. It shows just how little you understand. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. Maybe it shows you I envy you for going through something I can't go through. There is envy in this, you know, and I'm honest enough to admit it. It's not honesty, it's bloody stupid romanticism. People who are, feel they are missing out on our great adventure are sick in my book. Comes down to sharing You again. can't share this. I love you. And keep your distance. And don't feel envy or jealousy just because you're not a member of the club. Because it's not a club I would have wanted to have joined had I had had the choice. Lie down with me. You're too angry. Lie down with me. I don't take orders. I wasn't ordering you, I was asking. I don't want physical contact with you at the moment. didn't say I'd touch you. Right, now what? You don't very much like me saying that I love you, do you? I'll pass on that. What is it, the word? It's a lot of things. Have you ever said it? Yep. To the person who gave me the virus. So you knew who it was? No, I got fucked senseless by 25 people every night for a year. That's the myth, isn't it? Didn't mean that. No, no one ever does. Yes, I was in love with the guy. I'd had the test regularly and I was in the clear. <clears throat> he said he was negative and we fucked without a condom. What did you say to him? I didn't say anything to him. He was away in Sweden on business at the time. And when he got back, I'd moved. I hated him. How I hated him. <coughs> then some counsellor came up with a bit of unexpected wisdom. About what? The difference between chemistry and love. I don't follow. She said I was in chemistry with him and not in love. <coughs> Chemistry is when two chemical compatibles get on well in bed, have sensible conversations, and delude themselves that it's loving. Is this in chemistry then? I'm not sure. To be honest, we're not that. Compatible. And who ever said we had sensible conversations? <coughs> she had a point. To be in love with me. Needs warmth. The sun. Never was much good at chemistry, so I don't.
don't know if that can answer wanting to be warm with someone. A hundred car. The sun is cooling already. Cold. Well, cold scares me. It protects me. It shuts me out. <coughs> Chip away at the cold. The layer is too thick. I'll keep trying. Be careful. You chipping away might uncover a layer even colder underneath. It's a risk. Even if it's so cold, I freeze you out. I didn't know I was that young. For the months. I didn't think it was for the years we had ahead of us. For the months we've had. We've had 11 months and 16 days together. You counted. I count the days. Well, are you just going to sit there and watch it? Can you make it yourself. You know I can't make it cake. Last time I made it cake, I nearly blew up the classroom. The rest of the time we have together. We'll have a long time. Oh yes, and by what miracle? Are they going to develop a drug that's going to save us tomorrow or the day after tomorrow? Do you have information that I know nothing about? No, I have no the information. The candles add up to twelve. How many bloody more will there be? We'll add Oh more. yes, six more or will we manage another twelve? I was mentally adding years. <laughs> Don't! It's my birthday. Don't laugh like that. Peter. Will you give me an extra birthday present? What? I want us to play a game. A bit of role reversal. Michael. All the best parties play games. There are only two of us. This is a game for two. Later the BP group will be coming and we couldn't play them. Look, when they arrive, do you want me to be here? I know you said yes. I no want you here. But in the meantime, let's act out a scene. Nothing more, Big Michael. That's up to us not to make it so. What do we do? I am you, and you are me. Have you got any matches, a lighter? Yeah. Then let's light the candles. Make it festive. I'm you. And I'm you. This feels stupid. What do we do now? In as quiet and as cool a way as possible, we act out a goodbye scene. I'd like to see how we do it, me being you and you being me. I won't do it. It's my extra birthday present, remember? Don't worry, it's not a death goodbye. I still won't do it. The party's over. I'm exactly. going. It's my birthday. We've gone to Paris. No, not weekend. Paris. I want to go with you to Paris. It's July 14, late afternoon, if you like. Lots of noisy tourists, mostly English and American and German tourists, all clipping away with their cameras as they watch the parade go by. Such a party. Peter is bored with the crowds. 
and clearly irritable. It's clear he has something on his mind he wants to tell Michael. Michael suggests they go to a restaurant. Are we still playing? Yes. We are in the restaurant. I am tying with a plate of expensive food. What's the matter, Peter? I'm not hungry, Michael. I want to talk to you. I can't pretend any longer. I don't understand. I want out. What? I thought I could... This afternoon, I you wanted to could what? stand it, Michael, but I can't. I can't stand what is happening to you and be unable to stop it. I want out. I want out before I get too involved. I am too involved! I've been too involved for 12 months. Play the game. Play! But Michael, you must understand that as much as I love you, I'm not strong enough for it. I couldn't just sit around and wait for you to fall sick because then I'll never forgive myself for failing you. I know it's a shitty time to tell you this, but I just can't lie any longer. I'm want out. I'm weak and I'm not as strong as you imagine. I want out before the going gets rough. I won't let you do it. Do what? Say things I've never even thought of. I love you. How many times do I have to repeat it? Love. Think of the possible meanings of that word. Here's one for you. Love is giving what you haven't got to someone who doesn't want it. Now do you see how cold the lair underneath really is? Before you ask, I've had more than seven gin this time. I did not. I've also had coffee, so don't offer me any coffee. What were you doing before you fell asleep? Reading? TV, a late film. What was it? Dirty Dozen. Never seen it. It wasn't very good. And the title is lively. Why? Because I felt like drinking. And if there was any more drink in this house, I'd carry on drinking. And perhaps, just perhaps, you join me. I've got a couple of cans in the fridge, shall I get them? Oh, you mean you really drink with me? <coughs> you like? It's no fun drinking with someone who does it for you. I drink? Yes. But you don't drink. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I drive you to it. You'd be ugly drunk. Mm. It might be worth it to see you ugly. At the moment, I'd find a bit of rough ugliness attractive. I'm tired. Then go to bed. I'm going to phone in sick tomorrow. Oh. Is that allowed? A healthy member of staff calling in sick at an AIDS helpline? You won't provoke me, Mike. What are you going to tell them? That you've got a touch of flu, a bit of tummy trouble, constipation or diarrhea? Shut up, Mike! Or sick because you're with me? I have headaches. I also have sinus troubles. You know that. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot that you're allowed to be genuinely ill. 
It's a selfish streak I have. I'll phone in sick. We'll spend the day alone <coughs> together. We'll go to the sea. No thanks. The last time you took me to the cinema, we went to see a rerun of Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> we don't have the same taste. Well, in quite a few things, really. Michael, do you want a round? Not particularly. Only thing in its favour is it might sober me up. I'll get the cans. I'll have one if you have one. Lager. A row. I'll get the cans. <laughs> You saw that, I suppose. It's your wall. Oh, that's okay then, is it? I'm not damaging your property. You moved in with me, and then when you're sick, or tired, or bored with me, then you move out again. You really going to drink with me? but you haven't opened it. Now lie to me and say you wanted it. Go on, lie to me! Not funny, Michael, it's ugly. Well, aren't I? No. I am ugly. Stop it! I want to disgust you so that you'll stop it. So that you'll stop wanting me. Look. I'm looking. Look closely at my face. What do you see there? I see the face of the man. Oh, don't say it. Not love or care for. The reality, not that. What do you see? You can see, but you can't say, right? You can't even admit it to yourself. I'll tell you what you see. My hair is beginning to thin. I had beautiful hair a year ago, real gay magazine stuff, but it's thinning now. It's, it's not got that much, how should I say, advertising bounce. <laughs> you couldn't sell shampoo with it. It's okay, just fading. The colour is fading and the texture is getting duller. Mm -hmm. Lifeless. That's the word. Lifeless hair. And then there's my skin. I'm getting rashes a long lot of the time. Why haven't you noticed? I've noticed. Look, some people have a roughish skin. Mine was good. Until recently. The drugs are saving my life, but they're not saving my skin. And being a shallow person, it upsets me. I used to really get off of my skin. <laughs> Look, you're just being cruel to, to you. To yourself! My skin is being cruel to <clears throat> me. My hair is giving up on me and I've got nothing to do with it! I tried positive thinking. Oh yes, I tried positive thinking. It makes you feel positive without actually telling you what you're meant to be feeling positive about. I would tell myself that with the right health and the right sleep and the right diet supplements that I'd feel better about myself. And I did. I felt better about feeling better. And then the night sweats. 
and the sallow skin and lifeless hair made me realize that inner well-being is no substitute for a rotting outer shell. It's only outer. Positive thinking didn't allow for the fact that to me, inner and outer are one in the same. And I am fed up with this outer shell, and so in time will you. How can you say that and not want it to be different? Of course I want it to be bloody different! <laughs> I don't want to wait for you to catch up on my deterioration. I don't want the look in your eyes that goes, Aah! as soon as I open my mouth, and there in my mouth is a tongue covered in thrush. The sight that puts you off kissing for life. Well, that is important. Ah, isn't it? My arms. I'm proud of my arms. I've got, I've, I've got good muscles. Look, you've, you've held them. You've touched them. You should know. Why are you trying to drive me away? You don't want to. Not really. You love me. You can't admit it. Counselor at all. I'm Peter, not a fucking counselor! Stay out with you all night. I'll get you to really talk to me. Frank died tonight. I was at the hospital. We stayed with him all day. Later that afternoon, he managed to talk. Plugged in. Dripped in with a catheter up his prick, he still managed to talk. Get drunk, guys, after I'm dead, he said. Do it for me. Piss me up to heaven. I kept my promise. <coughs> and now I'm here. I'm glad you're here. Don't be tender. I'm glad you're here. <coughs> Help me make that work, something! myself to people I don't know. What about the people you do know? Pen. <coughs> Been called a fairly buttoned up type of man. I have this image of myself trapped in clothes. <coughs> trapped in clothes. I feel as if I'm with a psychiatrist with you. I don't like the feeling. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist? I was 19 and I got cold feet about preferring men. And then I had a fear of it was AIDS. Did the psychiatrist help the fear? No. It's blunt enough. He didn't. I did. I went out and slept with a guy. Oh, I chose a guy with care. 
I cruised the clubs and pubs until I found someone who had the courage enough to admit that they were HIV. <coughs> what happened when you returned to the psychiatrist? I saw the guy I met, Simon, two or three times. Through him I joined an AIDS help line. First as a volunteer. Then when a job vacancy came up, I went for it. I still had the job as telephone receptionist, as typist. When you were with Simon, did the fear go away? I think it just went inside. Now it's returned. I've fallen in love with a man who was HIV. What's the difference between Michael and Simon? I told you. I loved Michael. I didn't love Simon. I didn't look at Simon and fear that I'd lose him, that there'd be nothing left after the loss. And you do with Michael. Have you ever stopped to think that you're deliberately putting yourself in situations that cause you pain? I came here to talk with someone. That sounds like jargon. I'm sorry if you think that. That sounds like jargon too! I can't say what you want to hear. <coughs> trying to respond to what you are telling me. I don't want to see another psychiatrist. But you do need help. That's why you asked to see to me. I want to talk equally with someone. I don't want to be interpreted. I was suggesting a possible behaviour pattern. I've gone to bed with two men who I've known are HIV. I chose both of them for very different reasons. The first was to come to terms with the fear. There were other ways of dealing with that. Like more therapy? Yes, more talking through the fears, not necessarily with a professional. I wanted to act! I believe in action. Did you stop to think you were using this man, Simon? No, I didn't. He never gave me any reason to believe that I was. Are you sure about that? What you are saying is that I'm using one. I'm asking about this man, Simon. You were dealing with someone vulnerable. Because he's different as he's HIV? In a way, yes. You make that sound unequal. It wasn't unequal. Simon and I talked about it. Michael and I talked about it and still talk about it. Didn't you come here to feel guilty about sleeping with two men who are HIV? seem to. I feel as if I'm being talked down to. Lecture. That's not intended. Why is it so wrong to sleep with a man who is antibody positive? Why do counsellors and others, including some of those who are HIV, feel it's so wrong? It's like a taboo. Possibly you get that impression because of their vulnerability. Sick people are Sick! The word makes you angry. <clears throat> Bloody right it does. Michael is not helped by a sick label. I am not helped by being told I am sleeping with a sick label. Are you sure you're not HIV? Have you tested? <laughs> Would that make it all right then? Would two vulnerable people be less of a threat? That's very hostile. I feel that you're wanting to put them in one camp, and us, assuming I am not HIV, in another. Knit divisions. The age-old different blood syndrome. I don't think you're using reason here. How can I use reason? When the reasons people are giving me for my so-called behaviour are so primitive. Keep the good blood away from the bad. It's all a question of blood in the end. The blacks have miscegenation in the South, they have it now in South Africa. We have it here with our classifications of infection and non-infection. I thought you came here to talk about your fears. Seems like I am discovering new ones. Like just what I am up against with people like you. People inside and outside of the helplines who want to division. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't causing problems. True. True. 
that a lot of the problems could be dealt with if people helped me live with Michael and not try to drive me away from him. Are people honestly trying to do that? Honestly? <laughs> Honesty's got nothing to do with it! There's nothing honest about one camp for the sick, your turn. One for the others. Don't expect me to say help. I would like to help your anger. Time is running out. The half hour isn't up yet. And anyway, my next time can wait a bit. This is important. For you. <coughs> okay, I'll call this session over. But I'd like you to come back. Yes. Thanks for asking. Four thirty. What are you doing up? I'm worried about you. If I told her sleep, you needn't be worried about me. I didn't ask for anything. All the same, I wanted to make sure. Did it hurt? Yes. Do you think you should be drinking that cold water? I could make this. I didn't soup. ask for anything. I've had a tooth out. I've also had two fillings, and I'm not that used to Valium. Of course I'm in pain. Do you remember me putting you to bed yesterday afternoon? No. But thank you. But maybe some hot soup would do you some Peter, good. Peter, for Christ's sake! I can't get it right, can I? Oh, this is no time to discuss. Look, I wanted to go with you to the dentist, but that woman... Carol? Carol has a car. I don't have a car. I don't earn enough money to buy a car. Is it my fault if we're both bloody poor? Is it my fault if I can't afford a car? I wanted to take you. He could have got a taxi. I've known Carol for a long time. It just seemed easier, that's all. It made me feel useless. I think you're being a bit selfish here. Look, please, can this discussion wait? I'm feeling dreadful. Hurt. You hurt! Yes, I hurt! I wanted to be there. To hold my hand? Just to be there. Has it ever crossed your mind that I didn't want you to be there with me at the dentist, either holding my hand or looking distressed at what was happening to me? Carol does neither. She's neutral. I can't be neutral. If I wasn't HIV, would you still want to come with me to the dentist and make big cow eyes at me? Some kind. I wanted to show you I cared. You took me to bed this afternoon. I can't remember, but I'm grateful. That shows you care. But you really don't need to prove it to me, or for that matter, yourself. I care. Yes, you tell me you do, over and over. You keep reminding me that I'm HIV by smothering me with attention. Peter, please go to bed. I'm feeling dreadful and will row, and I could really do without a row. I hate you sometimes. Nice. 
What am I supposed to do? Pretend you're all right? I am all right, and don't shout at me! I'm overprotected because I'm scared. Despite my reluctance to do so, we better talk. Let me make one thing clear. You worrying makes me worry, and that does my immune system no good. I know you can't help but be worried, but it's a vicious circle. If you're anxious that I might deteriorate or die on you, that makes me even more conscious that I'm sick, and I do not want to feel that I'm sick. Someone who is HIV remind you less than I do? I've never lived with someone who is HIV. But would he have a different reaction? Well, whoever this hypothetical man is, he probably would. Two people in the same boat don't need constant reminding of their situation. No, I'm not in the same boat. Oh, please, can we drop the metaphors? At quarter to five in the morning, I prefer plain speaking. <coughs> you are not, to your knowledge, HIV. I am. And that makes you worried of losing me to the great bogeyman death which makes you over-anxious, and frankly, I could do without it. Wet. It's called a night sweat. And your pyjamas are wet. I'll get you a fresh pair. No! You're the offended dentist. You feel as though you have a temperature. No, you'll catch a cold! First I'm hot, then I'm cold! Why don't you rub me down with a towel? That's one of the good, exciting things you like doing to me! Shiver <laughs> But let me take you back to bed. It feels like torture what we are doing. I can't. I can't get it right all of the time. Rub me down with a towel. Just let me. Please let me try. Boring party. Am I in the kitchen? Everybody else seems to be either in the main room or the bedroom, so I thought I'd come in here. see the bedrooms. I'd rather not see them in the pitch black. I have. Noisier than the music. <laughs> Bloody stupid, I call it. What? What's going on in there? It's their business. The animals went in two by two. Oh, you're not going to compare us to the ark, are you? Please spare us. Isn't it? What? Frightening. I think I know what you are talking about, and if you are, you've chosen the wrong man. I'm not even drunk enough to appreciate I want this conversation. To talk to someone. I want to drink. There's a beer in the fridge. I bedroom. want to ask someone why they're taking all these risks. Look, I don't even know. I mean, what upstairs name. bathroom, two guys lying on the floor, sucking each other off with light on. Would it have been better if the light had been off? You want to take them serious? Look, as I said, I don't even know your. No, I don't want to take this seriously. I came here not to take things seriously. Do you know people here? Do you? Friends, friend told me. Said there would be too fussy who let in. Thought a free drink was appealing. How do you know about it? I work for an AIDS helpline. A friend of mine who works there gave me the address. Is he here? She actually. No, she isn't. Why do you? Do that. Do what? Work for them. Who are them? The AIDS people. The last person I want to end up with is a guy that's got the virus. Oh god, I wish I was drunk. Well, what do you think about it? I should be going. Pushing off then? It's getting late. Have you got it? I'm not going to answer that. 
crux of that issue. I've been tested. It's your decision to test. You mean you work with them, you don't all get tested? It's bloody outrageous. I've tested every six months since the thing started, come out negative each time. I intend to stay that way. It's your choice to test. I sound like those counselors. Oh, yeah. I'm a receptionist. Now look, can I go please? Wait, politely? hold on. Don't be angry. I'm not getting to you. Sit down, Kimi. Mm. Saying you've got it, and I know you can't get it that way. Just tuck it by now. It's wet. <laughs> and wait, I can see if I've got it. You're not thin. Cut, you really think by, you can tell by looking that someone is eight. I know, it's bloody invisible. You're really scared, aren't you? Too right, I am. My last boyfriend suspected he was sleeping around, chopped him at once. Supposing he got it. Supposing he had. Well, it was his own fault. I blame a lot of them to get it. I know you probably feel sorry for them because it's a good cause working for them. But you can't deny put themselves at risk. I happen to be in love with someone who has it. Why? Why what? I love them. They're plenty of healthy people left to choose from. Did you know he had it when you met him? In the first meeting, Sick. yes. Look, I don't want to get angry with you. I, I know you're scared. They won't be bloody patronising. Feel angry because a nice looking man like you could put himself at risk. My lover is not a risk. Do you? Do we fuck? I presume that's what you want to ask. We make love, we do that, we also take precautions. Sick. I'm not alone in feeling that. Most of my friends wouldn't get near a guy's HIV. Really? Then they wouldn't. I expect the few of them are HIV themselves. They expect they have sex with their own kind. They certainly don't post about it. The animals went in two by two. If I stay a minute longer, I'm going to smash your ignorant foul mouth in. Have a nice end of the party. I'm supposed to be doing anything with anybody. We had a meal. You said practically nothing. All meal. Sorry, sorry. You asked me to pass the salt. Which isn't good for me. You asked me to pass the salt. I don't believe you said another word. I said the salad dressing tasted a little sharp. Oh, did you? Sorry. In the silence, I didn't hear. I had nothing to say. You aren't talking to me. Hmm? Not tonight. Not the night before that. We didn't see each other the night before that, so if I calculate correctly, that makes four days that we haven't even spoken. I have nothing to say. Then why have me around? You moved in with me. It wouldn't be polite to ask you to go. No, it wouldn't be polite. But I'll go. Sometimes I need my solitude. 
For four days when you're supposed to be living together four with someone. Four five doesn't make any we difference. We don't even have a dog I can take for a walk. All right, you've made your point. Well, I've shut you out. Why? Five nights ago, you did something. I did a number of things five nights ago. If I remember correctly, we got rather drunk. Yeah, so that you could forget that I was HIV and that you were not. No, I'm thinking of something else. <coughs> something painfully specific. It was... <coughs> I don't have the words. I wanted to. You could have restrained yourself. My decision. Since when is it one person's decision to turn the person they're having sex Make with... Love ...having you. sex with into a potential killer? If not physically, then psychologically. Did you ever stop to think of the damage it was causing me? But the chances Real, are... Real, it was dangerous, and you've got no excuse. I... No excuse. You wanted my ass. You wanted to put your cock up my ass, and that's all there is to I it. I didn't do no, it. I made my decision, remember. I didn't want you to carry out your death wish. Shut up, Michael. I didn't want to talk before, and now I do. I do not have a death wish. I love you, even though you never, ever say you love me. Aren't we changing the subject No, we're here. very much with the subject. I do not want your death. I do not want my death. Then understand that I care enough about you not to want to put you at risk. Care. Not love. You never say love. But you obviously don't care enough about me to put me into a cruel, embarrassing situation. Don't for fuck's sake start reading again! I want to see how chapter four ends. Put it down! Maybe it has a bad ending. I'll tell you how it ends. Last sentence of chapter four. Mrs. Austin had clearly had enough of these crises and we can hardly blame her. The double life of Jane Austen. I like to read Jane Austen. Does this book imply that she had a more interesting life than we are led to believe? At least she wasn't rude and had a bit of manners! Nor did she have HIV. I want you to go. I know you do. <laughs> I said I want you to go. Upset me. Why do your tears upset me? I love you, but I can't bear to see you cry. I don't think we should talk anymore. There's so much about you that I don't know. I didn't know you liked Jay Austin. Maybe the HIV gets in the way. Maybe it does. Do you want 
want to know what happened five nights ago? What happened was, I forgot. I forgot you were H I V. as if there are no barriers between us. The feeling of love was so great that I didn't even think of protection. I behaved as we all want to behave. Spontaneously. I didn't even make a decision. I didn't realise I'd done a lot. Tonight, rightly, you reminded me. Suddenly I feel cold. Hold me. I need to go home. 